need you to, this is the final one. I need you to be driven. I need to be driven. Because somebody said they were bored, and I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. I'm feeling you. You're bored. I'm feeling you. I got a 3.5 after I got kicked out of college when I came back three years later. And people say, how did you get a 3.5? I got a 3.5 when I came back to college after getting kicked out because I had my first child. And when I came back to school, I wasn't going to school for school. I was going to school for my boy. My granddaddy was a high school dropout, my daddy, and I was a high school dropout. And I figured if I at least graduated from college that he would have to graduate from high school. I would be an example. So when I came back, I came back with a vengeance. I was driven by a purpose. I'm telling you, you'll never be what you're supposed to be. You'll never have what you're supposed to have. You'll never ball out until you got a purpose for why you do what you do. The people who blew up, they blew up because there was something that was going wrong in their life and they took that pain and they turned that pain into something. You will never ever go to class and you guys are spoiled. Do you know what it's like to go to class in Michigan in December? It's 10 inches of snow and they don't close the school and it's minus 10 degrees and you still got to go up and go to class? How do you go to class when it's 10 degrees and 12 inches of snow? You know how you do it? Because you know your mama broke and she working two jobs and taking on a loan for you to go to school. I laugh at kids whose parents are broke and they up there partying like everybody else. Your mama broke. You went to school, listen to me, some kids when they go to school, they just going to school to keep the legacy alive. Their mama already got money. Some of us, we taking our loans to help our we taking our loans and sending it home so people can pay rent. That money ain't even going to college. And we still going to parties. We still clubbing. Listen to me, nothing against fraternities. But I've had students, students. One dude had a 3.2 GPA and got in a fraternity his freshman year and it went down to like a one something. I'm saying, what kind of brotherhood is that? When you got my man up at 2 o'clock in the morning washing your car and going to get you groceries when you should be helping this kid to study. Now he can't get into college of business, but he got Greek letters. He didn't come to school to get Greek letters. That's a bonus. He came to school to get a degree because if you walk out of here without a degree, you came up short, short. So you gotta be driven. I'm driven, y'all. I get up every Monday and do TGIM. I drive home, get back to the airport, hour and a half drive back and forth almost every single day because I'm driven. I want my son to have a better life than I had. I don't want my son begging like I had to beg. I don't want my son to ever think he got to sell dope or he got to steal from the mall. I'm driven. I want my daughter to know what it's like to have. I'm driven. I'm driven. When I was at the Michael Jordan Classic the other day and I opened up that whole conference, people were like, E, you speaking at the Michael Jordan Classic. How do you feel, bro? You made it. I said, I'm hungrier than I've ever been before. Now I want to speak to the Pistons, the Knicks, the Boston Celtics. I'm driven now. I'm hungrier than I've ever been before. Why? Because I tasted it now. I tasted it. I, I mean, I messed up. In my book bag, I got the first check I ever got from Nike. I used to buy Nikes, and I got a check with my name on it. I ain't even put it in the bank, because I want you to see it. I'm driven. When I got that first check from Nike, I was like, ooh, I'm on the payroll. That means I can get another check. And the next check I got was double that check. I'm driven. What drives you? Because you ain't going to go to class just to go to class to hear somebody teach. You got to go to class with a purpose and say, I don't care if he's boring or not. I got to get through him and I got to get through that class and I got to get through that boring stuff so I can get to where I'm trying to get to. If it takes a boring uh, uh, biology class, then I'm taking biology. If I got to go through calculus to make my family get to a level they've never been through, calculus, watch your back. Because your boy is coming. PhD is hard, bro. But I'm about to finish up. I got one little part left. I'm about to finish up. Why? Because I want it as bad as I want to breathe. breathe. You got to be driven. What are you driven by? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a PhD at 26. And he was willing to give his life. Why? Because he cared more about the freedom of women and the freedom of minorities than he cared about anything else. He, listen to me. He had a PhD at 26. He had a job. He didn't have to get involved in the struggle. But he was willing to make that sacrifice. And he said it. He said it in his speech. Longevity, longevity, longevity. Has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he has allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. I'm asking you when you go out there from now on, I'm asking you to stop, 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 stop just trying to do what they tell you to do. If coach tell you, shh, Michael Jordan, first, always, they said Mike was always the first one, the last one. Jerry Rice was always the first one, the last one. I'm telling you, don't get, 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 get from the C thing. 
And I dare you, I dare you for one time in your career, I dare you to exhaust yourself. I dare you to, I dare you to leave every single thing on the field, one season, everything, walk off exhausted. Like Mike when he got 45 with the flu. He had the flu. Like for real, let's be honest. One of your players got the flu and they tell you I got the flu, I can't play. You're like, cool, I understand. We'll catch you next game. Mike was like, I got this, don't worry about it. But Mike, you got the flu. I, my flu is still better than your normal game, all right? <laughs> Whatever your little game is, my flu gonna outdo your game. So I'm gonna play, play. Now play. the big story here tonight concerning Michael Jordan's physical conditions. He is suffering from flu-like symptoms. Uh, his status is uncertain. The bad news for the Bulls, the stomach virus that has hit Michael Jordan, and you wonder just how much, how long, and how hard he'll be able to go. Demanded the ball. Back Michael. Open three. Yes! They lead it. 38 points for the King. Look at Dagger at him with a three. Yes! A courageous, classic performance by the flu-ridden Michael Jordan. Propelled by their victory, the Bulls would go on to win the championship in game six and michael jordan had added perhaps the most amazing chapter to his playoff legend it's all about desire you just got to come out here and do what you got to do you wanted it real bad you know and, and me as a leader i had to come out and do my best somehow i found the energy just stay strong i, I wanted you. it really bad I dare you i dare you to show up I, listen to me i dare you to to, to just say, you know what? I'm not going to save nothing this year. I ain't going to save nothing this year. I'm everything I got. Coach getting everything. Oh, everything. Whatever they ask me to do, I'm doing that beyond. I'm leaving. I'm, when I leave this year, I ain't going to have nothing left. And why do I say that? I, I'm, I'm a runner. I, I, I run long distance. Some days when I run, man, I go six, seven. When I finish, I'm not breathing hard. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. I just finished doing six miles, but I'm not breathing hard. Raise your hand. You know exactly what I'm talking about. No, raise your hand if you've ever experienced it. You've done what you're supposed to do, but at the end of the day, you're not really breathing real hard. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. you, did, you put the workout in. You did exactly what you're supposed to do. You did your exercise. You did your reps, but you still, <laughs> you good. <laughs> Tell me if you know a time when you ran so hard, you worked so hard, that you felt your chest. After you finished, you felt your heart beat. Right? You ever worked so hard, you felt that blood, like you could taste blood. You worked so hard. Right? You sweating, and you knew when you finished, you had to sit down and get you something to drink because you knew you didn't have no more to give. Raise your hand if you had that experience, too. I dare you. How many more games left? 130-something. 130 130-something games left? Okay, that's how many we got left? 130. Can I get the exact number? 120. 120. Let me tell you, you ought to know exactly which games. You better be marking them off, counting them down, like you in jail. <laughs> you ask a guy in jail how many days he got left, trust me, he ain't going to say, well, I'm not on him say, sure. You ask a dude in jail, how many days you got left? 121 and a half a day. <laughs> Two hours left. My man counting them down. Why? Because he ready to get up out of there. This your life. You should know. So you say we got 100 and something left? This is what I'm asking you to do. However many you have left, I dare you. That second feeling when you giving everything you got and you ain't got no more, I dare you, I dare you to give that every single game. Never gonna stop me, baby. You can't stop me now. You can't stop me now. You can't stop me now. You can't stop me. You can't stop me now. You can't stop me. You can't stop me, baby. You can't stop me now. 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 So I read a story, we're gonna get into my message now, because I think you're ready now. I read a story the other day. A young lady sent me, you know how people send stuff on the email, you ain't really, just that forward stuff. Like you be like, ah, here go another kitty cat boy. You know, you see the cat, it's like, here go another one of kitty cat forwards. You know what I'm saying? Like a thousand of them come a day, all right? But I, I know this person, so I was like, and they know me, they know I'm busy. So they know I ain't got time for forwards. So I'm like, it must be sweet. So let me look at it. Then I'm going to be honest. Even though the person has credibility with me, I'm going to tell y'all what really hit me. When I looked at it, it was only two paragraphs. I was like, I can do that. I can do that. Right? Because it was about four or five. I wouldn't even read it. But I was like, I can read two paragraphs. I can do that. Right? So I start reading it. I want you to catch this. I start reading it. And so it was a story. I don't know where the story was, but it was on a mountain somewhere with a nice little river water or whatever. And it was a lady who they said she was out there. And, and, and some kind of way she found this jewel. 
and she had a little small lunch left, but when she found this Jew, she was pumped up, you know, it was like gold almost. It was a precious stone, and she was thinking in her mind, like, ooh, when I get back, I can make millions off of this. Like, she just kind of knew that this stone was precious. So out of nowhere, the story says it's like this like beggar, this guy came and asked her, you know, could he have lunch or whatever. And so she was like, look, I ain't got a lot, but I got this sandwich, you can have it, right? So she gave my man the sandwich,